Good morning, Lockie. How are you? Good, thank you. So for the last three or four weeks, we've been focusing on Australian popular culture, late 20th century. You guys have been looking at, interviewed your grandparents and parents. You've been preparing individual speeches on different topics, which are for tomorrow. Today is about us pulling it all together. We're starting to organise your ideas, synthesise ideas to see what some of the big key themes might have been underlying this five or six decade period. So today's lesson is sort of a wrap up lesson where I'm trying to help them synthesise and organise their ideas beyond the mere historical detail. I'm trying to get them to go beyond the music, uh, the technology, the sport, the fashion. I'm trying to help them think a little bit more deeply about it and look for the big picture key ideas. What's really pulling it all together, what's going on behind the scenes. Thank you for doing that. We're going to jump back to five minutes of free writing like we often do at the start of class. So here's the instructions this time. Right, instructions for free writing which you guys are familiar with. The topic is simply at the top. It's open. Australian popular culture 45 to 2000. Today we're going to organise the ideas we've been thinking about for the last four weeks or so. So it's about synthesising. You know the instructions for free writing. No discussion please. Five minutes. Remember you must keep your pen moving. You can't make mistakes. So I have learned to become really curious about what sense my students are making and attempt to really use my questions to push them so that I'm not encouraging them to head towards some predetermined response that I've determined that they will head to, that I'm actually fascinated by their ideas. So we're going to do something now that we've done before called the Microlab Protocol. So the Microlab is where we're working in threes, working in triads. This is that, uh, that protocol where we go A, B and C. You speak for 60 seconds, then there's the 30 seconds of silence. You remember this? So I'm going to put you in threes in a moment. And the idea is that we're going to have two rounds. For the first round, everyone will speak for 60 seconds about that topic, Australian popular culture. 1945 to the year 2000. One person speaks for 60 seconds, then there's 30 seconds reflection. So in a moment when I say go, I'm going to ask you to get into threes. When you do get into threes, A is the shortest person, C is the tallest person. Go. So A, 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 So A, you have 60 seconds to speak about Australian popular culture. Ready? Go. Um, so you could see from the start in 1945 that the Australian popular culture was mostly British, influenced from Britain. So obviously the Beatles in the 60s was a high influence. And, but as the, like the 70s, 80s continued, Australia became more independent, having their own style of music, film, fashion, etc. I'm really interested to see what patterns they're noticing in terms of technology, in terms of music, perhaps influencing fashion, how they're looking across the various topics and how it holds together for them. So I'm interested to see, uh, for instance, whether anybody identifies the Cold War as something that's particularly important in influencing popular culture, whether there are the big themes that I perhaps might not have at the forefront of my mind that they introduce, which becomes a sort of wow moment. Oh, didn't think of that. B, your turn. In the 60s, I think, the, um, the woman who wore a miniskirt to the races, yeah, so that was kind of a turning point for fashion. And then at first it was thought like really bad and disgraceful. But then later on, everyone realised it was quite cool. Well, the main turning points within, key turning points within Australia is, and the world's uh, popular culture change was technology. So without the change of technology, nothing else would happen. Like, as Ollie said, like TV, the, uh, the tradition of TV uh, allowed families at home to see key world news and stuff. I was hearing all sorts of things come out of that microlab protocol. Uh, and I could see their thinking evolving. See, your turn. 
for example, bringing up like issues within the environment and political issues such as like indigenous land rights and stuff like that. So making them more aware and conscious of like uh, natural owners of the land. So like America and the US, uh, stuff like that. And pause, please. Thirty seconds of silence. So you'll notice what I've been doing as you guys have been having those triad discussions, the micro lab. I've been listening to what you've been saying, just grabbing some snippets from conversations. Obviously I couldn't get round to all of you, but I was just trying to pick up the flow of words and phrases that I was hearing in the classroom. So my question to you guys now, given everything you've done for the last 10 or 15 minutes, everything you have just been talking about, what are some of the key themes that have emerged? What are you thinking about now? Nick? The, um, the domination of uh, US and British influences that then tended to drop off towards the end of the 20th century. Okay, what makes you say that? Well, because during like, the start of the time we're talking about in the 50s, 60s, more of the popular, time, like, popular things of the time were coming from the US or Britain or were derived from it. Okay. I saw um, that most of the uh, most of the popular culture was influenced by musicians like Michael Jackson or the Beatles, like their hairstyle, their clothes, and then also sport was heavily uh, influenced by like from America in the late 1980s. Okay, thank you. So what I'm hearing at the moment is that America is having a really strong influence in the 80s. What else have we got? Uh, in 1980s and 90s, Australia was able to get a real taste of multiculturalism with a lot of people coming from boats from other countries and a lot of people didn't take it well and they had to get used to living around other cultures and things. Can we jump off this point? What do you think the impact of what Michael has just mentioned was on popular culture in Australia? Jonah? An Indian culture type of food was introduced, Bollywood, movies from Bollywood and music became a little bit popular in Australia. Okay, thank you. Uh, in the late 1980s to um, 2000, Australia started moving from uh, being influenced by other countries to making its own popular culture and then in turn influencing um, other countries such as America and Britain. Thank you. So I'm hearing something new here. Not only is Australia being influenced by other countries, Australia is starting to influence other countries. I'm wondering now what those turning points are that really sort of lead to that change. We're starting to focus beyond that detail and evidence that I talk about in history all the time and you're starting to dig a little bit deeper. You're starting to give me some analysis. You're starting to throw some insights out. So here's a big question I'd like you to think about. When we look at this time period, when we look at key turning points, what do you think is really going under the sur on under the surface? What's key to understanding all of this? We've got this information on the top in terms of what happened in those 55 years. But my question here is, what's really going on? I was pleasantly surprised by some of the ideas that they threw out, that they were able to connect big picture historical themes from the late 20th century to emerging Australian popular culture. Uh, they were able to go well beyond that. They were talking uh, about the Vietnam War, about the influence of uh, refugees in the 1970s on food in Australia, for example and start to put all this together in terms of a coordinated thread of understanding the emerging identity through popular culture. Now, I was impressed with their thinking.